Are we good? Okay. So uh, when Laszlo said, hey, we should see if we can set up a workshop, he was like, okay, you'll do a talk. It's going to be called Elm's Future. And so that was my hint. Okay, do something where people sort of know what the roadmap is, where things are going. Um, so whenever I sit down with uh, uh, my boss, he always says, okay, this is Elm today. And Elm's always in the bottom left corner. But wherever, whatever has happened, it's always there. However much progress, you still end up there. And then, okay, we want to go here. What's over here? What's your goal? What's going to happen? Um, we know it's beautiful, but like what actually concretely are we moving towards? And so um, when I thought about what to, what to say, like what actually goes in this spot, um, I sort of came back to some of the, the, the key goals that I had from the beginning. So there's this concept that exists of get shit done. And I, I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of this idea um, because uh, you finish it, but it's shitty. Um, and it's sort of like built into this term of like, I'm just going to get it together. It's not going to be a good experience. It's not going to be a good result, but it's going to be done. And I wanted to uh, be more ambitious than that or have better tools than that where you can get things done, but in a way that you feel good about and with a result that you feel good about. Um, and so from there, I had this concept of make web program programming pleasant. So this was actually the f when there was the first tagline. It was Elm makes web programming. Elm aims to make web programming pleasant. Don't want to overpromise in like version 0 0.1, you know. Um, and so one part about this uh, this phrase is this word web. So like there are, there are other things that can go there. You can move out the word entirely. But so is it about making GUI programming pleasant or concurrent programming or robotics or audio? There are all these cool things that can be addressed when you're in an FRP uh, system. And so for me, I, ha I had to say, I need to focus on one thing and be good at that, as opposed to sort of lose steam in a lot of directions in my personal focus. Um, so it was important to be talking about web, but I felt like it's not really just about being pleasant. There's something like when I make an API, it's not like, oh, I want this to be like a day where it didn't rain. Uh, I want it to be like a nice day. I want it to be uh, 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 better than pleasant. And so I sort of, started brainstorming, like, what are the things that I really like about Elm, and so, or, or that I shoot for? And one is shocking simplicity. So, like, something where you, like, you see the program and you're like, surely there is, like, another file or files or directory of stuff. And so, I like, I like this phrasing because I feel like this captures the analog clock example that we've been talking about recently, where it's like, if I can write it in eight lines, like, there's a certain level of, like, that come from that that I that I that I'm really attracted to maybe for better or for worse in in terms of my uh, code as uh, the aesthetics of the results sometimes um, another and there are other just experiences that I sort of hear that I that I like if it compiles it works this this concept that in general is 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 kind of the way it goes um, or this is a personal experience I've had where like this is the code I'd hope to write if I'd planned ahead. So I'll, when I was working on uh, slides for the PLDI talk, that talk was all an Elm program. Um, when I got to the end, I was like, oh, actually, like, I was just frantically like, oh, I got to get this done before tomorrow. But at the end of the result, I was like, actually, if I had to architect this, like a wise person who planned ahead, it'd be pretty close to this. Um, and so this is a property I really like. Um, and also this idea of like, learning and sharing ideas. So like, there's something about this where when you see these programs, you, or when you write something cool, you wanna share that with people and show it to people. Um, and the last one is finding the perfect library. So this has happened a couple of times in writing the compiler, um, and it's something that I want to happen uh, when you're using it. So like, well, my example of this is I was working on the type checker for 0 0.9, and at some point I realized, oh man, I need to find strongly connected components of a graph, and I need to interpret all of these uh, variables in this way. And I was like, oh God, how, you know, I'm surely gonna make errors here. I searched for a graph library. First function in there is strongly connected components. And you just give it your edges, it gives you the result. And I was like, oh, I just saved like a week. Um, and so having this kind of experience is, is really, I think, powerful in terms of 
making, making something great. And so the way I wanted to phrase this is uh, make web programming delightful. So you have these surprising moments where it not only did it go well, but it went better than you, you could have imagined. And I want this to be the goal in that not necessarily will I be able to reach that or will we be able to reach that, but it's there as when you design an API or do you, you design a tool. Um, it's not just about being done or about being okay. It's about really like surprising people and saying, oh wow, this is something I really like or, or I learned something from using this. So we have our goal. Oh, I also want to make a note. So the reason I put get shit done up there is that I, I, I want to make a point that part of this is about doing things and about having a practical tool that can be used. So for me, this idea of make web programming delightful encompasses, of course, getting things done and, and, and making practical tools. So you write something and not only does it look nice, but it works well as well. So you could be using this in an industrial setting or a more professional setting as well. So in terms of how do we get here, there are lots of, there are lots of paths. So whenever you have this line, you're like, okay, this would be great, but okay, what's, what's right here? What do I do to stay on this nice straight path to where I want to go? Um, and it's, it's, it's confusing. So I, I at first made a huge brainstorm of all the things that could go, and I eventually got them down into nice snippets. At first it was just like a huge web. Um, so there are resources, so this is examples and stuff. There are tools, this is really important. Um, and uh, like how do we debug, how do we uh, edit code. Um, collaboration, so how do people using Elm work together? How do people working on the compiler work together? Um, there's expressiveness. This one's one of the obvious things when you look at a language. You're just like, oh, can I write this? Or like, where are my for loops? These kinds of, these are very common uh, things that people talk about, but it's a small part of what, what this path is to uh, our goal. And then there's also compiler. So like, how do I make uh, the resulting code faster? How do I make the compiler faster? How do I uh, start thinking about concurrency and cross-platform things. And so when I look at all these things and I say, okay, if I could choose only a couple, what is really going to help get to this goal the most? And so the goal I set for myself is to help the community thrive. So a lot of these are really cool problems that I'd really like to work on. And they're also really cool problems that you guys are working on. And so I, my goal right now is to choose the tasks that are going to enable people to start addressing more of these issues. Um, and so the key one to do that, I think, is libraries. So having a way to easily share libraries with each other. So when someone writes the graph library, it's out there. And when I need strongly connecting components, I'm just like, yes, this is done. Someone thought this through. Someone figured it out. I get the benefit of this. Um, and in that, in that vein, so, ha so making it so that people can write high quality libraries, um, to support that, interop is very important, so inter integrating with HTML and JavaScript. How can we bring this in closer? So if you do need a safety valve, it's there for you. Um, and also performance, so when you write something that needs tail call optimization or needs some kind of um, a bit more performance, that's there for you. Um, so in light of this goal, I have a list of priorities. I'm not calling it a roadmap. It's not a promise, it's not binding, but there are things that I think are important that I'm gonna focus on. Um, top of this list is library sharing. Um, <laughs> uh, then HTML JavaScript integration. This one has been, you know, it's, it's, it, it hurts my soul a little bit, but it's really important and uh, it's gonna open up a lot of possibilities. So if someone has access to a, H a nice HTML library, suddenly you can start adding features that I couldn't get to myself um, or experimenting things with I, that perhaps other people didn't think of. Um, another is make contribution easier. So I, I think something I personally struggle with is, uh, is, is dealing with contributions in a, in a good way where like uh, uh, enabling people to work on things and like being proactive in, in making projects and everything. So I think this is something that's currently quite hard and I'm always really happy when someone gets through all the barriers that I have yet to break down and actually does make contributions. Um, and finally, tail call optimization, which I think is increasingly important as people start to write bigger and bigger programs. Um, 
And so when we come back and look at these goals, uh, we see, okay, we're addressing these key issues and the priorities are such that really the goal is how can I uh, make all of these things possible to address. And what's been really amazing about like this workshop that Laszlo decided to set up is that so many of these things are gonna be talked about today. Um, and so that's really motivating to like see everyone and, and know that when I get this freaking library thing done, like there are gonna be people there who are like, yes, finally, I can share this vector library. I can share this uh, parsing library with everyone. Um, and so in the couple of days before this, uh, some people were here showing some demos. And so originally this was the end of the talk, but I was like, I wanna do a demo as well. Um, so it's just a small short one. So someone on the list, so this is representative of how the progress is gonna be made towards these major goals. But someone on the list was like, I don't, I wanna REPL. It would really help my progress if I have these seven files and I wanna play with a function in one of them. And really there's no way to do that at the moment. Um, and I was working on libraries and interop and I just was like, ah, oh, like, do you, how do you do versioning? How do you have multiple versions? Ah, ah. And so I was just like, okay, today I'm writing a REPL. That's my task. And so taking a break so that someone can be like, ah, yeah, okay. Actually, there is a way to do this. And so I just want to show, oh, I don't know if this is going to show up at all. Ah, no, 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 wrong tool. <laughs> that one doesn't exist. Um, so this was in response to this request where uh, you can start doing any kind of expression And, and start actually computing things. And so one nice thing is that, uh, so the, the one part I wanted to show is that when you write these functions, it shows you the type automatically. And I just really, I was just like, ah, yes, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I think this kind of gets at, like, it's not just about having a REPL, but it's like looking at all the REPLs I've used and saying, okay, what are the key parts that I like from this? And what's, how can I bring these together in a way that's not just an adequate REPL, but it's one that really makes me happy um, to use or surprises me in nice ways. So this is my small demo. I'm gonna get trounced by later demos, um, but I wanted, to, I wanted to show a little bit. But yeah, so this is my, this is my rough set of priorities and goals. And I just want to say thank you all for coming here and for uh, working on such cool things and hopefully I can make it easier for you guys to work on those things and help you as much as possible. Question? Yes. So, what is the plan for Alan Gett? So, this, after this workshop, uh, I'm going to be focusing on this more and the So the key things that sort of like are up in the air is a lot of people are saying, okay, you should use NPM and sort of have this existing infrastructure. Um, and I think there are some benefits to this. Um, and the other option is to do a Git-based thing where I can have more control over how to sh um, do multiple versions of libraries. Because NPM allows this, but in a way that's not super flexible. Um, so after this workshop is over, I'm gonna start actually uh, using these things more and like trying out different versions of this. Is that? Makes sense. Yeah. Has it changed? Has your plan or strategy changed since you originally announced your version of that? Um, a bit. So initially I was like, okay, I need to do some kind of custom thing because none of these solutions will address the particular needs of Elm and very few of them actually are good in the first place. Um, and then from there, I learn more and more about NPM, which has a lot of nice properties, um, but you still ha end up having to do a decent amount of work. So one thing that's not ideal with NPM is you, if you upload there, um, you just go into the general ecosystem of NPM. And so when you look for regex or something, you find all the JavaScript libraries, some of like C libraries that are on there as well. So you get this very diverse set of stuff and maybe it's someone who did one commit to like try out 
how to upload something. Um, and so it's very hard to filter through. And so I wanted to have an actual, so the reason for the new docs homepage is so that we have an actual home for documentation of all these projects in a reasonable way. And with NPM, you still have to make that project. Like you're not gonna get the nice documentation. Um, so it's gonna be a balance of how much work is just there by default and what benefits do I get by making this dependency on NPM and is it actually worthwhile to, to pay the cost of doing a bit more work on downloading stuff? Right. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Any others? Yes? Are there any plans to make uh, the tool uh, not the traditional uh, editor and REPL separated, but some kind of integrated stuff where uh, any sub expression can be viewed uh, right. like a type, its result, so some kind of inline debugger or uh, right. you know, so, this kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. So, so some of my, w what I try to do with when I, when I make tools like this is to try to make small components that could be reused on any platform. So to me, it's important that it's not just like a web IDE, but when someone wants to use Emacs or wants to use Lighttable or uh, Sublime Text, you have these ways to hook into existing tools. So with the REPL, I, I, I think this can be integrated at least with a lot of the offline editors. And the goal is to provide more and more uh, support from the compiler where you can ask, hey, what's the parse of this? Or, hey, if I ask about this, what's the result? Um, so this is a long-term goal to make these nice componentized things. Um, I don't know how soon, mm -hmm. but yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'd like to. So if I understand correctly, the question is about, okay, so there exists this REPL. How will this be exposed online? How can you make a service that does this kind of thing? Um, I at the moment, you'd have to make calls to the server and then return those back to the, the uh, person using the site. Um, and I think that's perhaps doable in, in, in a decent amount of cases. Um, and to make it more integrated, you'd need to compile the Elm compiler to JavaScript and be able to run the stuff in browser, um, which it's conceivable. It might be interesting to do collaborative REPLs, which would be literally IRC rooms <laughs> on the web. You know how they have the REPL on the Pascal IRC? Yeah. Right? So you can have separate IRC rooms for collaborative REPL. Just like building upon. Did you say on the JavaScript? Compile the compiler to JavaScript. Yeah, I already did that. Yeah. Well. Does it work? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. That's been done with the Haste compiler, um, and there, I think. Don't use GHCJS. Uh, GHCJS is worse than <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, when you say you can always use, it's like, well, given X Y Z element OP, you can use GHCJS at the moment. As I um, understand, Haste is pretty good at not making ten megabytes of JavaScript, but the problem I ran into. They took out trampolining in that. This was um, 0.8 that I did. Okay. Since then, there's many more dependencies. Okay. Which I have not tried to compile. Okay, interesting. <laughs> but it might be feasible to do in browser if yeah. this gets sorted out. Yeah. Okay. You talk a little bit about the, the groundwork you laid for, for Node when you did the ripple. So, yeah, so the way that REPL actually evaluates stuff is it calls out to Node. Um, and really the only, the only thing I had to put together was uh, 
there are parts of the runtime system that assume you're in a browser. So they assume that you have access to window or they ha that you have access to document. Um, and so to get working with the REPL, there actually was only one line that I needed to add to say, okay, it assumed there was a window to get, uh, to, to do frame updates, um, like a polyfill to make sure it's browser compatible. Um, and I just had to say, okay, it's either equal to window or it's equal to an empty record or an empty object and we'll just put dummy things that we'll never use. So it was very minimal changes to get that working. Um, but I think for a full, for the full experience of like running home code on node in a general way, there'd be a bit more work uh, to be done. But yeah, it was surprisingly just like, oh God, how many of these are there gonna be? And then it was, I was like, oh, there's only one. <laughs> So uh, thank you again.